All right, everyone, today in the Mueller probe has become nothing more than a cheap source of self-gratification for the bored masses. Uh, Mueller is apparently getting ready to accept a guilty plea from Rick Gates, you know, former Trump aide. Uh, only the problem is he's testifying against Manafort and this involves money laundering and fraud from years and years ago. So in other words, once again, we have, <laughs> we have another one of these situations. The entire mainstream media is talking about it nonstop for the last, you know, 12 hours. All the lay people, you know, the, and even the legacy media is not actually saying this, all of those people think this has something to do with Trump. But if you actually read the reporting, they're like, oh, no one's indicating this has anything to do with Trump. Rick G Gates is not going to testify against Trump because he knows nothing about any scenario involving Trump's, uh, you know, potential wrongdoing as being supposedly investigated by Mueller. The Mueller investigation so far has nailed Manafort to the wall anyway. This isn't even new news. Rick Gates, okay, he's going to testify against someone who already is in trouble, who's already been indicted, and who already provably laundered money 10 years ago. The problem is this, and this is what the Democrats are probably more nervous than Trump is over this revelation. Tony Podesta is named in the indictment of Paul Manafort. Tony Podesta. The brother of, of John Podesta. Do you know who that is? John Pizza Podesta, the dude who worked hand in hand with Hillary Clinton, talked with her every day during her campaign and chaired her campaign. One of the top men on the Clinton campaign, big time DNC flunky, now works, I think, for, for some legacy media. Doesn't he work for NBC or CNN or something like that as a consultant now? And he gets paid probably six figures every time he does a blog. Yeah, that, that John Podesta, his brother uh, with the Podesta group, you know, he steps down the next day, by the way, after the Manafort indictment. I wonder why that could possibly be. Does he want his business, his, his democratic tax haven sheltered when he goes to prison? Probably. He's going to take one for the team, I suppose. John's like, oh, come on, Tony. You really fucked up this time. What were you doing with Paul all those years ago? The thing is, this predates the Trump campaign by many, many years. Rick Gates is going to testify that Paul Manafort done bad things. He did bad things, and uh, Rick Gates did bad things years and years ago. But <laughs> it's not Trump. That's like saying, okay, let's say that someone begins to work for my company. And then it comes out that 10 years ago they did something terrible. And they get investigated, and the FBI comes calling and drags them off into a van. That doesn't reflect badly upon me, other than I had no idea that they were a bad person doing bad things. But it doesn't involve me. It doesn't it cause me to get indicted. It doesn't cause me to get in trouble unless there's a reasonable level of suspicion that I knew about it, that I was involved in it in some way. The fact that Trump has not been directly mentioned by Mueller as a person of interest at this point in those particular proceedings shows me he had zero involvement and didn't know what was going on. What I see is a pattern emerging in which people close to Trump have had shady dealings that never actually connect to Trump himself. It seems like people are attracted to his money and power, end up under his wing, and then because they feel shielded by the fact that they're associated with a multi-billionaire with a multinational company, they do their own thing and it turns out that it's a bad idea all along. Or, or here, here's a better way of putting it in the case of Manafort. Manafort's rich. Manafort's, you know, powerful. Reagan consultant, I believe campaign manager for Ronald Reagan, which is, you know, the funniest part of all this. Squeaky clean Ronnie himself. Yeah, his campaign manager was laundering money through Russia, along with some Democrats. Hey, everybody, you think that the Reagan thing was just a fucking illusion all along? Yeah, of course it was. He was a total pawn and a bunch of corporations and banks controlled him. That's the birth of the neocon era. He wasn't a good man. He was an okay, he was a tolerable presidential figurehead who really screwed with the Russians. Beyond that, he had no real use. That and, he, and, and the music was really good in the 1980s. This involves Paul Manafort. It doesn't involve Donald Trump. And all I hear from people, this time, it's, it's, he's going for the jugular. Mueller's going to get Trump this time. Ha, ah, this proves collusion. Well, who was it there? Uh... One of those former intel officials or some crazy shit comes out. This basically proves collusion between Trump and the Russians. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It proves that Rick Gates embezzled money along with Manafort a decade ago. Wasn't it, wasn't it back in the mid-2000s that it's, it's actually named on you? Like 2006 to 2008. This is years ago. They were working with the Podestas. Are you telling me that, you know, John Podesta was aware that Trump was laundering money for the Russians too? That would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? 
I think that would that would indict the entire political system. I don't think it would just be Trump at that point. I think it wouldn't be just oh you know some Republicans went rogue. No, they're talking <laughs> you're talking about high-ranking Democrats, the sort of people that can bundle a couple quick million for you really easily if you're running a neoliberal campaign. That's what Tony and John Podesta represent. Money men, real big money men. Manafort's a money man too. You know, can we think of some other people that have similar uh, appeals in the political realm? Maybe George Soros, the, the so-called Koch brothers, you know, cock brothers, because that's what they suck all day. You know, the, their biggest contribution to good, it seems, is bundling money at this point for a GOP that includes such wonderful candidates as Mitt Romney. <laughs> so, yeah, excuse me if I don't sit there and, and think that they're shining wonderful Americana or something. Now, this isn't going to touch Donald Trump. This is more much ado about nothing. It's just like the 13 Russians indictment. Okay, so a bunch of Russians, Russians they, they bought Facebook ads. They ship posted on Twitter. They, they used bots to, you know, drive up hashtags. The thing is, as far as I know, nothing particularly that they did is illegal because nothing they did was targeted at the entire, at the, at the United States itself. You know, the, the idea, I guess, is, well, they were denigrating the election system of the United States. No. Arguing that a candidate should go to jail or is a bad person is not doing... Are, are you saying that everyone that criticized Hillary Clinton committed a federal uh, crime? You know, interfering in the election on behalf of some foreign entity? No. Absolutely not. Those And by the way, those indictments probably won't even stick. There might be some criminal uh, money schemes involved on the side. That could certainly cause people to go to prison. But that's what you're talking about with Manafort. We're not talking, most of what Mueller has been saying, and I wonder if any Democrat in the country has noticed this. I wonder, was this noticed by any anti-Trump force at all? Anyone in the media? Any, any lay Democrat? Did you notice that in none of these cases you're talking about Trump and Russia? You're talking about Flynn, half of it involves Turkey. Yeah, he's having inappropriate contact with the Russians. Not in an election sense, though. We're talking about uh, in, in a money laundering sense. Paul Manafort, years ago, was working with the Podesta group embezzling or laundering money or something. You know, Gates was apparently involved. But the thing is, the fact that a handful of people around Trump were involved in prior criminal activity means very little. Do you honestly think that you can scrape together that many people in D.C. or on Wall Street that aren't involved in that kind of activity? They're all laundering money. They're all embezzling money. The government does it all the time. You know, they lose our money every single day. It's a common thing. It would be very difficult to make a probe like this about any candidacy and the people involved and not find dirt on those people. That does not mean Donald Trump was involved. I, I have every suspicion. Trump had been gearing up for years for his run. I think he kept it very, very much by the books for a very long time uh, in preparation for the possibility of running for the presidency. I don't think you're going to find anything that has to do with Russia. I don't think you're going to find any money laundering. You might find that people were laundering money uh, on the side associated with Jared Kushner. Maybe he did stuff like that, but it's not going to touch Donald Trump. You're not going to be able to impeach him. I'm sorry, but the Mueller probe at this point is a dead fish. The Mueller probe is totally pointless. Their biggest catch is Paul Manafort, not Donald Trump. Paul Manafort, who, who <laughs> very briefly ran his campaign, got fired by Trump. Why do you think Trump ended up firing most of these people over time? Why do you think that they ended up departing and getting replaced by other people? Do you think that Trump may have found out uh, through a little bit of scuttlebutt that something fishy had gone on in the past that might come back to bite his ass? And he's like, well, now I'm just going to pay these people to leave then. I'm going to get them out of my hair because, you know, I, I smell a rat. I think something fishy might be going on here. I think that's a possibility. I think more likely, though. Uh, it's just the fact that people were attracted to his campaign. They're like, it's a big money campaign. We want power. We want money because that's obviously what they were after 10 years ago. Then they've got criminal backgrounds. You know, they hadn't been tried for, but they were embezzling and laundering money and doing crazy shit 10 years ago. That's the way D.C. and Wall Street unfortunately work. That doesn't mean Trump's involved. He wasn't on, <laughs> he wasn't on D.C. Uh, or really even in Wall Street. He was too busy building condominiums, too busy building skyscrapers. Uh, the Mueller probe is not going to impeach Donald Trump. At this point, it's pretty safe to say it's, it's a dead investigation. They'll probably wrap it up at some point. This is probably the last gasp of the entire thing. Uh, and when they don't get any further leads, when they can't prove that Trump himself did anything, what the hell are they supposed to do? Oh, yeah, the probe's just going to keep going forever. We're going to investigate your kids and grandkids, too, like, for the next 30 years. And Mueller, eventually, he kicks the bucket so someone else just takes over. And it'll be like an intergenerational nonstop probe of anyone 
who's, who's within five degrees of separation of Trump's 2016 campaign. Not going to happen. Not going to find dirt on him. That's about all. Peace out.